people and welcome. In this video, we will explore the concept of phasers and their role in representing alternating quantities, like those found in AC electrical circuits. We'll break down everything from the basic definition to the underlying mathematics, making it easy for anyone to understand. Let's begin with the fundamental topic, phasor representation of an alternating quantity. First, what is a phasor? The definition states, phasors are typically represented graphically as arrows in the complex plane, where the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the phasor and the angle between the arrow and the horizontal axis represents the phase angle. Let's look at a simple diagram to visualize this. We see a horizontal dashed line, which is our reference axis. From the left end of this axis, an arrow extends upwards and to the left. The length of this arrow represents the magnitude. For an alternating voltage, this would be the peak voltage, for a current, it would be the peak current. The angle that this arrow makes with the reference axis is the phase angle. This arrow is in static, it rotates. A curved arrow indicates the direction of rotation, which is counterclockwise. The speed at which it rotates is called the angular frequency, represented by the Greek letter omega. The formula for this is omega equals 2 times pi times f, where f is the frequency of the alternating quantity. The units for omega are radians per second. So, the speed of rotation is determined by the frequency of the AC signal. Now, how does this rotating arrow relate to the sine waves we see in AC circuits? The next diagram, titled Fig. Relation between alternating quantity and phasor, shows this connection perfectly. On the left side of the figure, we have a circle with a set of axes through its center. A rotating vector, our phasor, is shown inside this circle. Its length is labeled a sub m, which stands for the maximum or peak current. This phasor rotates counterclockwise. The diagram has marked several key angles around the circle, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 4, before returning to 2 pi, which is the same as 0. On the right side, we have a graph. The horizontal axis represents the angle, theta, in radians, and the vertical axis represents the instantaneous value of the current. Let's trace the connection. Imagine the phasor on the left starts at an angle of zero, pointing horizontally to the right. Its vertical projection, or its height, is zero. On the graph to the right, at an angle of zero, the sine wave starts at zero. Now, as the phasor rotates counterclockwise to an angle of pi over 2, or 90 degrees, it points straight up. Its vertical height is now at its maximum, which is I sub m. On the graph, at the angle pi over 2, the sine wave reaches its positive peak, I sub m. As the phasor continues to rotate to pi, or 180 degrees, it points horizontally to the left. Its vertical height is again zero. On the graph, the sine wave crosses the horizontal axis at pi. At 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees, the phasor points straight down. Its vertical height is now at its negative maximum, or negative I sub m. On the graph, the sine wave reaches its negative peak, negative I sub m, at this angle. Finally, at 2 pi, or 360 degrees, the phasor completes a full circle and returns to its starting position. Its vertical height is back to zero, and the sine wave on the right completes its cycle. The diagram specifically highlights the point where the angle theta is pi over 4. The vertical projection of the phasor at this point is I sub m times the sine of pi over 4. On the graph, this corresponds to a value of 0.707 times I sub m. This shows that at any point in its rotation, the vertical component of the phasor gives the instantaneous value of the alternating quantity. Next, let's discuss leading and lagging phase difference. In many AC circuits, we have multiple voltages or currents that are not perfectly synchronized. They are shifted in time relative to each other. This shift is called a phase difference. First, let's look at the concept of leading phase difference. On the left, we see a graph with two sine waves, labeled V sub A and V sub B. The equations are given as V sub A equals V sub M times sine of theta and V sub B equals V sub M times sine of the quantity theta plus phi. Notice the plus phi in the equation for V sub B. This means that the V sub B waveform is shifted to the left compared to V sub I. It reaches its peak and crosses zero earlier than V sub I. 
The horizontal distance between the corresponding points on the two waves is the phase difference, labeled with the Greek letter phi. Because V sub B occurs earlier, we say that V sub B leads V sub A by an angle of phi. On the right, we see the phasor diagram for this situation. The phasor for V sub A is drawn along the horizontal reference axis. The phasor for V sub B is drawn at an angle phi, rotated counterclockwise from V sub A. The counterclockwise direction is considered the leading direction. So, the diagram visually shows that V sub B leads V sub A by phi radians. Now, let's examine the concept of lagging phase difference. Again, we have two waves, V sub A and V sub B. This time, the equations are V sub A equals V sub M times sine of theta, and V sub B equals V sub M times sine of the quantity theta minus phi. The minus phi in the equation for V sub B means its waveform is shifted to the right. It reaches its peak and crosses zero later than V sub A. We say that V sub B lags V sub A by phi. The phasor diagram on the right illustrates this. V sub A is again on the horizontal axis. The phasor for V sub B is now drawn at an angle phi, but rotated clockwise from V sub A. The clockwise direction is the lagging direction. This clearly shows that V sub B lags V sub A by phi radians. There are also special cases. The next diagram shows a graph of cosine of x and sine of x. It notes that they follow each other by exactly pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees, apart. Cosine leads sine by 90 degrees. Let's consider two voltages that are in phase. The graph shows two waveforms, V sub A and V sub B, that are perfectly aligned. They reach their peaks at the same time and cross zero at the same time. In this case, the phase difference, phi, is equal to zero. The corresponding phasor diagram shows two arrows, V sub A and V sub B, pointing in the exact same direction. The opposite situation is when voltages are out of phase. The graph shows that when V sub A is at its positive peak, V sub B is at its negative peak. They are perfect opposites. Here, the phase difference, phi, is 180 degrees, or pi radians. The phasor diagram shows the two phasors, V sub A and V sub B, pointing in exactly opposite directions. Now we move on to the mathematical representation of phasor. To perform calculations with phasors, we need a solid mathematical framework. A phasor can be represented in two different ways, first, the rectangular form, and second, the polar form. Let's connect this to our sinusoid. A time-varying voltage is given by the equation V of T equals V sub M times sine of the quantity omega T plus phi. This can be represented by a phasor with magnitude V sub M and angle phi. A diagram shows this phasor as the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle. The horizontal side, or the X component, is equal to V sub M times the cosine of phi. The vertical side, or the Y component, is equal to V sub M times the sine of phi. This leads us to the core idea. A phasor is a complex number that represents the amplitude in phase of a sinusoid. Let's first discuss the rectangular form. A complex number, which we'll call z, can be written as z equals x plus jy. In this expression, x is the real part of z, and y is the imaginary part of z. The letter j represents the imaginary unit, which is the square root of negative 1. In electrical engineering, j is used instead of the traditional i to avoid confusion with the symbol for current. The rectangular form is particularly useful when you need to perform addition or subtraction of phasors. Next is the polar form. The same complex number z can be written as z equals or at an angle of phi. Here, r represents the magnitude of z, and phi represents its phase angle. The polar form is much better for performing multiplication and division of phasors. There is also a third form, the exponential form. We can write z equals or times e raised to the power of j phi. This is mathematically equivalent to the polar form and is derived from Euler's formula. Let's look at a diagram titled representation of a complex number to see how these forms relate. We have a set of axes, with the horizontal axis being the real axis and the vertical axis being the imaginary axis. A phasor z is drawn as an arrow from the origin to a point in the plane. The horizontal projection of this phasor is x, and its vertical projection is y. The length of the phasor is r, and the angle it makes with the positive real axis is phi. 
From this diagram, we can derive the conversion formulas. To convert from rectangular coordinates, x, y, to polar coordinates, r, phi, we use the following, r equals the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared, and phi equals the inverse tangent of y divided by x. To convert from polar back to rectangular, we use x equals or times the cosine of phi, and y equals or times the sine of phi. So, the complex number z can be written in multiple equivalent ways, z equals x plus jy, which is equal to or at an angle of phi, which is also equal to or times the quantity cosine of phi plus j times sine of phi. Let's look at one final phasor diagram. It shows a voltage phasor, V, and a current phasor, I. The voltage phasor has a magnitude V sub M and a positive phase angle phi. The current phasor has a magnitude I sub M and a negative phase angle, negative theta. The diagram reminds us that the counterclockwise direction is the leading direction, and the clockwise direction is the lagging direction. In this example, the current I is lagging the voltage V. In polar form, we would write V equals V sub M at an angle of phi, and I equals I sub M at an angle of negative theta. This brings us to the most important summary, which connects everything we've discussed. We have two ways of looking at the same electrical quantity. The expression V of T equals V sub M times cosine of the quantity omega T plus phi is the time domain representation. This equation tells you the exact value of the voltage at any given instant in time, T. It describes the full, continuous waveform. The expression V equals V sub M at an angle of phi is the phasor domain representation. This is a much simpler, static representation. It captures the two most important characteristics of the sinusoid, its peak magnitude, V sub M, and its phase angle, phi. By converting from the time domain to the phasor domain, complex calculus problems involving sinusoids become simple algebra problems with complex numbers. This transformation is a fundamental and powerful tool used in all AC circuit analysis.